Hi everyone, this lesson is on antidepressant discontinuation syndrome. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about what happens when someone stops taking their antidepressant. We're also going to talk about the antidepressants that are more commonly associated with this condition. And then we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms, how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. So antidepressant discontinuation syndrome is a condition caused by an abrupt discontinuation or reduction of an antidepressant medication. So it's an abrupt discontinuation or an abrupt reduction of a normal dose of an antidepressant medication. So it occurs when there is a reduction of a dose of medication without a proper tapering. Now, the reason why this condition occurs is not entirely understood as the underlying pathophysiology is not entirely known. And this condition affects a large number of patients. It is estimated to affect approximately 20% of patients that quickly reduce their medication doses. However, a patient would have had to have been on a continuous use of a particular dose of an antidepressant for at least four to six weeks for this condition to possibly occur. So they would have had to have been on a continuous dose of a particular antidepressant for at least four to six weeks and then quickly reduce or discontinue the dose. And then they are susceptible to this condition. And the longer a patient is on a particular dose of a medication, the higher the risk of this condition occurring if they do decrease their dose quickly. So those are two important points to make note of. What are some of the medications that are more likely to be associated with this condition? It has actually been found that almost all antidepressants may cause this condition, but there are some that are more likely to cause this condition. Some of them include the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs, including paroxetine. This actually probably has the highest risk of causing antidepressant discontinuation syndrome. Fluvoxamine is also another SSRI that probably has a higher risk of causing this condition if the dose is reduced too quickly. And out of the SSRIs, fluoxetine or Prozac has the lowest risk of causing antidepressant discontinuation syndrome when the dose is reduced. Other classes of antidepressants can also lead to this condition. These include tricyclic antidepressants or TCA antidepressants, monoamine oxidase inhibitors or MAOIs, and atypical antidepressants. With regards to atypical antidepressants, we can see venlafaxine or Effexor being one of those. This actually has a relatively high risk of causing antidepressant discontinuation syndrome when the dose has been reduced too quickly, as it has a relatively short half-life. It has one of the shortest half-lives of an antidepressant. Trazodone, mirtazapine, and duloxetine can also lead to antidepressant discontinuation syndrome as well if their doses are reduced too quickly. So what happens if a patient has this condition? What if they reduce or stop their antidepressant too quickly? What happens? So when they have stopped their antidepressant too quickly, symptoms will often occur within two to four days. So it can be even quicker than that. It may be 24 hours, but oftentimes it's within two to four days. Most often symptoms are going to be mild, but they can be severe in some cases. And the symptoms that are going to occur with this condition are going to be remembered by the mnemonic finish. So the word finish is a mnemonic to help us remember the categories of signs and symptoms that can occur with this condition. So F is for flu-like symptoms, I is for insomnia, N is for nausea, I is for imbalance, S is for sensory disturbance, and H is for hyperarousal. Now we're going to get into more specific detail in each of these categories in the next slide. So with regards to the flu-like symptoms in this condition, Patients will often experience malaise, so a general feeling of being unwell. They can feel lethargic, they can have fatigue, they can experience a headache, general achiness, and sweating. So they can feel generally unwell, as if they're coming down with a flu. Insomnia is also another very common finding in patients who experience this condition. So oftentimes they can have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. And then what's often found in these patients is that they can have very vivid or strange dreams or nightmares. So oftentimes patients will report having very odd dreams. Patients can also experience nausea, and this nausea can be severe enough to lead to vomiting in some cases. Patients can also experience imbalance. So imbalance can either be presyncope, so they can feel like they can almost faint, feel a little bit lightheaded, they can feel dizzy, or they can experience vertigo where the room itself is spinning. Sensory disturbances can also occur in these patients, so paresthesias can occur in certain parts of their body, so they can have shocks or tingling or burning sensations in different parts of their body, and they can also feel some odd sensations of feeling numb and some other sensations as well. And then they can also experience hyperarousal. So hyperarousal is going to 
most commonly include anxiety and agitation. So they feel on edge. They can feel irritable as well, and they can be more aggressive than usual. And these symptoms are often going to last for one to three weeks, although they can last even longer. They may last months to upwards of a year in some patients. So this can be very, very severe for some patients and can be mild for other patients. So it can have a varied intensity and experience depending on the patient and the dose and the medication. How is this condition diagnosed? Oftentimes it's going to be a clinical diagnosis. So if a patient has recently abruptly stopped or reduced a dose of a particular antidepressant that they've been on for a long period of time, at least four to six weeks, and they have these other signs and symptoms we talked about before, that is a clinical diagnosis of this condition. How do clinicians treat this condition? Oftentimes restarting the antidepressant at the same dose the patient was on is going to be enough for the patient to have relief of symptoms. Once that's done, if the goal is to stop the medication, a slower taper of the medication is important. And then patient education is also important, making sure that the patient is aware of some of these signs and symptoms if they are going to abruptly stop their medication. It's also important to look out for rebound symptoms of anxiety or depression that the patient is on these medications for. So it's important to educate the patient on some of these things we talked about in this lesson. When a patient is restarted on the antidepressant that they have stopped abruptly, if they're put back on the same dose, the symptoms will often resolve within 24 hours or up to three days. It may take up to three days for the symptoms to resolve after the medication has been restarted. But oftentimes, we're going to see it within the first one to two days. So if you want to learn about serotonin syndrome, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.